Well, Premier Doug Ford joins us this morning um, from his home, it looks like. Uh, thanks very much for making yourself available for us, uh, Premier, because we really haven't seen a lot of you in the last few weeks. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on, uh, Annette, and uh, always glad to speak to the people of Hamilton. Okay. Um, why are you speaking one-on-one -on -one with reporters today? I know you have a lot of a media availability. Is there is there a particular reason? No, I you know you know something. I, I talk to a lot of people. You go on a lot of shows. I talk to a lot of people on the calls. But the reason I, I want to speak to the people of Hamilton about the the, the great uh, deal that we struck with the federal government that we've been asking for months and months uh, to get on board and and. Uh, put up the $1.7 billion on their half and our half's 1.7. So that's uh, that's a big investment in in uh, Hamilton, over $3.4 billion. And we have 17 stops, 14 kilometer LRT, which I, I believe is gonna change the, the face of Hamilton. And it's gonna create thousands and thousands of jobs. Right, what was it like working with the federal government on this? Because recently your government's been running attack ads against the, uh, the, the federal government on the, uh, the Liberals on, uh, on the border issue. You know, we work with them every single day. We're putting together great deals right across the province with all different ministries. And uh, you know, all I'm asking, uh, we know 90% of every COVID case has the variants. Uh, they're, they're coming in, There's uh, our, our, our borders are porous to say the, the least, Buffalo Airport's the second largest airport in Ontario now. People are walking across, uh, skip, uh, skipping the uh, quarantine system. Um, you know, every, every day people are flying in with uh, COVID. I think it was yesterday, uh, there was there was five that we know about just at Pearson, not mentioning the thousands of people that are crossing the land borders. And uh, it's, it's like trying to fix a house with a big hole in it. Water's coming in, we're, we're getting needles into people's arms. Uh, we're, we're just asking them to to uh, tighten up the borders. You know, it's, it's right. Uh, well, we have seen a, a number, a, an increase in people walking over or driving over from Buffalo, but yet the yep. provincial numbers show that 0.7 percent of cases are coming from from travel, from international travel. So I think I think people are well, are wondering yeah. why why that fight? Why not put the energy into getting more shots in arms? Yeah, well, you know something, uh, and that, um, that that's just not an accurate figure. They aren't even measuring at the land borders. Uh, we have a number. Is this not Ontario point, government figures? It, it's roughly about 1.7. I'll give you a figure just at Pearson alone. 3,200 people um, landed with COVID at Pearson in just the last few months. Uh, I, I don't know if, if you remember Roberta House and Barry. One case with the UK variant went in there and uh, unfortunately killed 90 people, infected 200 people. That's just one case. And all we're saying is tighten up the, the borders. Uh, it's, it's very simple. You can't have rules on one side, uh, Pearson, and another totally different set of rules for the, the land borders that you get to walk across. You don't have to quarantine. Um, so uh, again, uh, one case is one too many. It can spread to hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, but there's a lot more than one case. Like I said, 3,200. Right. And, and the variants, and that, they didn't swim here. They didn't do the backstroke across the, the ocean. They didn't drop from Mars. They came from people flying into their our country. There's two things the federal government's responsible for, is get the vaccines, and we know how that turned out, and to tighten our borders. And uh, it's right, right now, it's a, a very porous border. Okay, I want to go back to the vaccines because yes, vaccines are coming in now. It is so yes. frustrating. I'm a member of the media, so I have, I, I, I kind of know where to look. I had trouble getting my vaccine. So many people are like, why, why is there not an Ontario portal that works quickly and, and a, an easy way of getting vaccines? And so people know that they can book. It's, it's yeah, right now a very complicated web and people are turning to to, you know, volunteer well, groups like vaccine hunters. Well, let, let me let me tell you, Annette, the five million people found a way to book it. Uh, you can phone the, the, the call the, the number uh, or you can you can go online. And I know not everyone goes online, so you can call the phone number. And I, I found it pretty amazing that the system that the, the province built never crashed. When we saw systems right across the country crash instantly. Uh, and, and one day we booked over 500,000 uh, appointments, almost 7 million people are going to be vaccinated. Uh, so the people in the vaccination centers are doing an incredible job. 
We're doing anywhere from 130 to 140,000 vaccinations a day. Uh, and in, in my opinion, a lot of people's opinion when they get in there, uh, they, they have a smooth transition. So if you if you need a vaccine, if you're telling me you have a problem, we'll, we'll get you a vaccine. And, no, no, no. I, I, I did. I did eventually book one and it was through a drugstore yeah. and it, it, it was great yeah. that way. I uh, want to get uh, 21 pharmacies, by the way. 21 pharmacies in, in Hamilton. Okay. Want to get so to I, the extension of the uh, stay-at-home order? Everybody knew it was coming, um, yep. but some of the science uh, table advisors are saying we should be allowed to go outdoors and and at rec recreation facilities, um, but yet you're saying no. Well, I, again, I'll, I'll disagree with that. I talk to them all the time. Dr. Brown is the chair. Uh, he sent me a message as of yesterday. You know. Keep, keep going, you know, keep the keep the uh, stay at home order in place. We have Dr. Williams, which I actually, uh, that's that's actually who I, I talk to mostly. He's a chief medical officer and uh, he's advising the same same thing. So, you know, something we're, we're gonna just continue uh, uh, listening to the, the doctors. And I understand there's always, uh, I always say, I talk to 10 doctors, I'll get 11 different answers. So we're, we're gonna uh, err on the side of caution and what I want to do is save the summer, save the July and August. On uh, June, June the second gives us a little more runway to get another million and a half people vaccinated. And uh, we we saw what what happened in that when I did open up, uh, and we were a much better shape. We were close to under a thousand cases, and I opened up. and And I'll tell you one thing: if I opened up, uh, we wouldn't be seeing a July in in August. Okay, I'm, I'm trying everything I can to make sure that happens. Okay, Premier Doug Ford, thanks for making time for us today. Thanks, Annette. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend.